UFC Fight Night, Alexander versus Curtis Blades. Alexander Volkov, that is. The classic wrestler versus striker matchup, obviously played in the in the heavyweight division. A lot was said about this fight coming forward, and more specifically, how competitive it was going to be. I think uh, Curtis Blades was an overwhelming favorite. And my, hasn't he really seen a, a rise in the ranks in terms of his stock in terms of the individuals that has beaten along the way in the heavyweight division really if you think of how impressive curtis blades has been there's only one person that that has has really tested him and that's francis Ngannou, and that's basically you know the, the next line to the throne so to me you know this fight was interesting uh for, for a couple of reasons but really you know curtis being an overwhelming favorite where was he going to go in terms of a fight once he won and he did win um, albeit the fashion which he won was probably not as impressive as we would have thought. So it, it was put out in the media that Curtis was, was going to pursue the takedown and the takedown he did. I think it was less than 30 seconds that he had a takedown. So look, I'm no wrestling expert. And from an entertainment standpoint, um, th there's definitely an appreciation of, of the takedown prowess. And, and, and Curtis did mix up the strikes there, especially I think in the, in the second round he came out... Uh, uh, really swinging for the not for the fences, but but really employing a bit of uh, attacking diversity. But really, the bread and butter was the takedowns and twenty takedowns. He took twenty plus takedowns. I think a UFC heavyweight record, which is amazing and, and just so so goes to sp speak to to his prowess in that particular you know area of mixed martial arts. I think the interesting thing is over time, there is no doubt that from a from a cardio perspective, wrestling is. If not the most, I think um, I, I was listening to a, a, a podcast by Luke Thomas. In terms of all the all, all the verticals, there's no doubt that f from a cardio perspective, taxing on the body, wrestling, especially if you're engaging in that takedown uh, manner of it with the double legs and single legs and, and just simply exploding and leaning on an individual and applying that pressure takes a lot out of a individual from a, um, from a cardio perspective. And in the... I think the back end of the third, definitely within the fourth, and absolutely within the fifth, we saw this manifest and play out in Curtis Blade's approach. Interestingly enough, while he was able to take um, Volkov down, and I and I can't remember, I recall exactly. I think it was in the in the second round when he was applying extreme heat on these on these ground and pound elbows, which are elbows that are enough to finish a, a fight. By the way, he finished a very similar fight against Alistair Overeem in in that particular manner, but. Yeah, like there was a lot of control, not not necessarily a lot of damage, and he couldn't necessarily put Volkov away. Uh, and and in the fourth round, you saw you saw a massive uh, decline in the gas tank of Curtis Blades, and, and it became a little bit of a fight because, well, granted Volkov was being taken to the ground considerably, and considerably is an understatement. Again, twenty plus takedowns, a UFC heavyweight record, I believe. Um, he still had a little bit in the gas tank and was throwing and touching up Curtis. Uh, the strike differential in the fourth and the fifth round was was pretty big. And I think on the fifth round, uh, Curtis um, walked straight into, I believe, a knee or something. Uh, it was definitely a, a kick of sorts. Look, Curtis was able to, to, to control the fifth round towards the end, get the takedown. And, and really, that was the tale of the tape. His offensive wrestling is, is in another stratosphere from that perspective. Interestingly enough, like... We, we, not that Volkov is a lower level opponent, but uh, where do, where does Curtis Blades go from here? And I think it's an interesting question because he, he really was exhausted in the post-fight interview to the point where he almost couldn't speak. And Dana White in the press conference wasn't actually overly impressed uh, in terms of his performance. And that's, again, look, listen, that's not to take away from a fighter. If you win a fight and you're tactically able to employ a strategy that works, all kudos to you. Um... You, you know, were, were there conditioning issues? Potentially. Uh, but he set a pace that I don't think, well, no one has in, in, the, in the heavyweight division. So, you know, when you reach close to the sun, you often get burnt out. And I think this is what happened with Curtis Blades. Doesn't make his, his victory any less impressive. I think, where the hell do you go from here? I mean, the Mola is, is versing Vadum. That could be an interesting sort of fight. But uh, until that heavyweight, that, that path of that triangle between DC... Uh, Stipe and Francis is is kind of cleared. I, I he's a number three contender, right? Like I just I don't see where he leapfrogs, right? Like does he want to to stay and wait? Potentially, why would you? What do you have to gain? 
uh, when you don't have to impress Dana. I mean, obviously you do, but like your your path to the throne is kind of there. So really interesting. The heavyweight division. Look, I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna um, beat around the bush. It's it's. There's not there's not a lot of heat once you go past Francis um, and and Curtis really. Uh, Volkov. Don't know where he goes from here. Really. I mean, there's there's a couple of interesting fights that you can make, but there's a massive deficit in his takedown defense, which really was going to be the key for him to have some. And he did have success, by the way, on the feet. And he's shown that against top-level uh, opponents. So interesting to see where he goes there. But I think that this card was overshadowed by the co-main, which was Josh Emmett and, and Burgess. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm having a, um, a mind blank in terms of his... I think Shane, Shane Burgess, in terms of uh, the names. But wow, this was a fight of the year contender. I tweeted it out, but... This fight showed the evolution of striking in mixed martial arts, and it was amazing. Very rarely do you have a fight. Um, and these, by the way, just, just to pre preface it, these lower weight classes are producing some cracker of a fight because you have individuals that can keep up the gas tank in what is a very entertaining style of fighting, which is like in the pocket and amazing strikes, um, while at the same time dishing and taking some good damage. Man... Shane Burgess, by the way, does he does he not look like um, gee, an, another mind blank? That that guy from Game of Thrones. I'm, I'm gonna put a photo up here. Oh man, like that was an amazing fight. Uh, Emmett comes out with heat in his hands, and he he that overwrite is an absolute weapon that we're seeing these lower weight classes employ. And I think, I just I think he's the hardest hitter at 145. I and mean, that's a that's an amazing statement to say given. The, the length that you know Emmett has been it's just this this last trajectory and arc you've we really kind of take notice and obviously the Michael Johnson KO was an it was an uh, was a punctuation to that now getting back to the fight specifically this fight was uh was take took place in close quarters really in the pocket fighting and it was uh, it was two different strategies there was definitely a height advantage with Burgos, but Emmett had, had had the power play in his hands and he was landing that overhand quite often. Interestingly enough, uh, it didn't really deter Burgos. He, he, could, he could take a punch, but at the same time, he was willing to exchange within the pocket and utilize his reflexes to kind of get out of the way. And while he didn't necessarily have the heat that Shane, uh, Emmett rather, was, was throwing, uh, he was able to A, take it, and be very creative with his uh, uppercut. So uh, very fluid sort of strikes. And that combination made him really deadly. I think that the, 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 main, uh, the main focus points in the, in the, in the first, first, quarter, uh, first round rather was the fact that Emmett obviously had something wrong with his leg. He came out, he slipped something, and he was compromised for the rest of it, which makes this happened effectively in the beginning of the fight, which makes this striking performance really, really... Um, really impressive uh w w when you think about it um yeah like it it, it was really a really impressive performance uh in, in the second round we saw uh emmett slow down a bit whether this was a conscious thing to to noting uh you know the compromising of his leg or, or whether he just ran out a little bit of gas we saw the fluidity of, of burgess come out uh burgos rather come out and he was really able to, to pepper Emmett with, with strikes and land quite early and often. And this was really interesting. And this is what I was saying, the evolution of, of striking. You had two individuals that were willing to trade in the pocket, but had really different uh, sort of methodologies to kind of get there. And each were having areas of effect. Uh, uh, Burgos was, was chopping at that leg. And obviously he saw uh, Emmett was compromised you know, in, in the first round. And he went there early and often. And, and the only thing I could say is, potentially, he should have just aimed all the heat there because I tell you what, Emmett's got a poker face. He, he's, got a, he's got a pain threshold up there because he was throwing heat. And what was interesting, again, and this is where my real appreciation for the, for the low weight classes, the 145s, um, man, like we, we're seeing some heat in those, in the, in those divisions is at the end of the first round, Emmett was breathing deep, man. Like, he, he was sucking them up. And, and this was because every shot was thrown at 100% hit, hit rate. Like, he was going for these power punches. So he had made a conscious decision in his mind that there was no way I, I, I want to fight the distance, obviously, with the compromising of his leg, potentially. And, and he was going for the knockout. And every fight was there. Um, and that's what makes Burgos quite impressive. He took a lot of heat and it 
the guard was really impressive for Burgos, like uh, in, in terms of his ability to stay in the pocket, weather the heat, throw back, not necessarily with the same amount of interest, but with the same amount of frequency. Um, yeah, like this was, if you have not watched this fight, this will not disappoint and is definitely a fight of the night, can, a fight of the, it was definitely a fight of the night, uh, fight of the year candidate. That's how good this fight was. On the third round, essentially, uh, we saw a role reversal. So I, uh, and and essentially what happened here is some of the overhands that Emmett was um, that was throwing in the first and the second started connecting started connecting flushly um, and I and I can't recall exactly when if it was in the middle of the third round or towards the end uh, Emmett changed it up in terms of the overhand and went with a left instead of the right and it rocked him and and um, really it it was there that. Uh, that we kind of saw the finish line in terms of Burgos. He wasn't finished. Uh, they were still throwing at the end. Emmett does the takedown. And how how important is the takedown getting in in terms of uh, its punctuation at the end of fights? We saw this with Feely last week. And, and, and you could say, like, these were close rounds, man. Like, these were really close rounds. I, th I think, you know, a couple of, of strikes go a different way and you, you, you potentially have... Um, Burgos coming out with, with with a victory there, but really entertaining fight, and more importantly, ooh, where to from here? Um, where to from here? I've got an interesting one. Ige and, and Calvin Cater, they're fighting in Yas Island. What about the winner of that versus you know Emmett? Uh, he, he wants uh, wants a guy in front of him, so not necessarily Ige. Where, where, where is Cater? Like it's it, it's really interesting. Uh, Volkanovski was, was definitely looking. He, he was on Twitter saying that he had a look. So that division is heating up and with Ortega and, and, and Zombie. Kind of like oh, what, what's happened. Um, yeah, wow. Like that's, that's a really, really exciting division. Well, guys, that's my analysis of the fights. Um, and, and, and there were other good performances, by the way. Uh, Mohamed Bilal had a really good fight against uh, Good. That was a really good fight. And he looked ultra impressive there with his, you know... Dominic Cruz switching a stance. Um, we're seeing some really good fights, guys. Leave some comments below. Give us a, a, a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Uh, leave some questions below if you want. Um, chat soon. Peace.